I have been doing keyboard conversations, which you very rightly describe as a concert with commentary, for almost 42 years. The longest running series of them is in Chicago at Northwestern University, where we're in year 42. And they are ideal for young people who would like to be introduced to classical music in an accessible and inviting format. Yes, well, the title was interesting, Beethoven Bonanza, and I actually had considered putting together many different Beethoven works that would add up to 14 hours of the program, but I didn't think that would go down all that well. So, but I kept the title Bonanza because of the diversity of Beethoven's musical speech, which we will experience with this program. Everything from the hilarious rage over a lost penny to the pathos of the and the enormous anger that one hears in the Sonata Pathetique, one of Beethoven's most famous pieces. And then we're also going to hear some music that Beethoven wrote after he could not hear anymore. And it's music of a spiritual exaltation, of an interior depth, of a profundity of thought that's unlike anything even he wrote before. So there'll be a diversity of musical speech and also uh, works that are very familiar and well-loved and works that are going to be, I think, political discoveries for everyone. There's something about his music. It's never been out of favor from his time to our own. He's never been out of vogue anywhere. I, I think it's, it, no, there's been no greater composer and there's no greater body of music that's been left by a composer than, than Beethoven. And uh, it, particularly the piano music, if I may say so, is, is attractive not only for the pianist but for people who love piano music because in so many ways it is so tremendously expressive from the pits of despair to absolute jubilation. You find it all in Beethoven's music. My hope is that uh, whatever I share with the audience, verbally and with musical examples, before I play the piece straight through, will help the listener, whether he's heard this piece a hundred times or he's going to hear it for the first time, will make it a more accessible, meaningful listening experience, more than just sitting there letting the the sound go in one ear and out the other. For example, why did Beethoven call this famous work the Sonata Pathétique? Why did he just call it Sonata Number no. 8, which it is for the piano? Why Pathétique? And what did it mean? And why did he feel it was so important that that title be there? And what is there about the piece of music which makes us feel that it's loaded with an inner sorrow and a certain rebellion against fate? And why is it a revolutionary piece? Because the finale certainly does not bring a smile of contentment that all is well in the well-ordered world. So I think knowing this and putting it in perspective and having some idea of what's going on in Beethoven's life when he writes this piece uh, makes a much more enriched listening experience for everybody.